Now, we'll call this point of contact down here, let's call it P. There's the point of contact. Now, I want you to draw from the point of contact a chord in the circle. We haven't talked about chords since the first lesson on circles. Do you remember what a chord is? A chord is any interval that what? What makes a chord a chord? That, that, joins, that joins any two points on the circumference, okay? So I have one. So pick any, literally, any other point on the circumference. Uh, I'm going to pick one over here, for instance. Let's call this guy A, and we're going to join up uh, the chord to that point, okay? Now, just a, a, a minor piece of, uh, no, not notation, terminology for you. You know how this is the point of contact? The point of contact. Because this chord joins up with the point of contact, we call it, uh, I'll use a different color, it's a chord that joins up with this point of contact, so it's called the chord of contact. I know, right? It's uh, amazing. Uh, so, you've got a point of contact, you've got a chord of contact. Okay. Now, the chord of contact AP, excuse me, you can use it to form an angle on the circumference of the circle on the opposite side, over here, okay? So pick any point you like on the opposite side, over here, and uh, jo join up a, find a, you know, label it, call it B or whatever you want. Actually, I'm going to put my B somewhere else, just to make it easier to illustrate what I'm about to show you. Okay, pick that point, and then I want you to join up A, B, P. Join up that angle on the circumference. Okay, the last thing you'll need <coughs> is um, just another point on, on this side, just so we can talk about it, not to do any more constructions. Uh, because it's on the tangent, I'm going to call this guy T for tangent. Okay. Right, now I want you to look very closely at your diagram. What I contend, what I'm suggesting, what I'm proposing, is that angle TPA, TPA, this is what we're required to prove. I'm going to suggest that angle TPA is equal to angle ABP. That guy over there on the circumference. It kind of even looks equal, as you'd hope because we've properly constructed. Have a look at your diagram. Your diagram will look a little bit different to mine. The angles might be different in size. The, the, the chord of contact might be different in size. But we should still be able to find this relationship. That this angle here, between the tangent and the chord of contact, equals this guy over here, up in this corner. Okay? How will we prove that this is the case? Okay? Um, I'm going to give you a clue and I'm going to set you to work. The clue is constructions will be handy. I'm not going to tell you which constructions, but maybe you have a guess as to what constructions. If you think you have something, um, and just for the sake of consistency, let's call this guy um, alpha. If you think you can show that that guy is alpha as well, call me over, I'd love to have a look. Okay, off you go. Now the clue that I provided to a few people who wanted it was uh, to construct some radii, okay? Um, there are lots of different radii here. In general, you try not to construct too many things because as you know, if it just becomes a mess of lines, you can't see anything anymore and that's not useful to you, okay? So the radii I want you to draw are the radii that come from the chord of contact, okay? So in other words, from A and P. So I've conveniently already got a center, which is a dent in my whiteboard, so I'm gonna call that O, the center. And if you join up OP and OA, because these are radii, what kind of triangle have you formed? An isosceles triangle. Common theme, right? So I'm just gonna mark them in. Okay, now because you joined up the radii to the point of, sorry, the chord of contact, that means that this radius here, this particular one, joins the point of contact. Well, what do you know about tangents and the radii at the point of contact? They're right angles, right? So this angle here, OPA, uh, OPT, sorry, OPT is right angled, yes? Which means that OPA, in terms of alpha, because they add up to a right angle together. What's OPA? 90 minus alpha. Yep. 90 
minus alpha. Okay. Well, if that's 90 minus alpha, you told me 30 seconds ago that this is an isosceles triangle, so you know that this is also 90 minus alpha. Okay. Oh, by the way, just a minor point. I, I even hear myself saying 90 minus alpha, even though I'm writing down 90 degrees minus alpha. Please do write the degrees. Uh, if you haven't been writing degrees so far, the reason why is because, especially you guys, are going to learn within the next 12 to 15 months that degrees are not the only way to measure angles. In fact, degrees are a very poor way of measuring angles when you want to advance further into mathematics. So when you're measuring angles and you mean degrees, say degrees. Okay. I've got two angles in this triangle, which means I can find the third one. What's this guy? 90 minus alpha, 90 minus alpha. This guy, to make the, tr the angle sum be 180, what does this have to be? Alpha. Two alpha, right? Because it's going to have to cancel with these minus alphas down here. Okay? But if this is two alpha, remember where we're going, right? This, this has to be alpha. What's the reason? What's the reason? Because the angle at the center, standing on this arc AP, the angle at the center is double the angle at the circumference that's on the same arc. That's really nice. You see how they all come together, right? It's quite beautiful. Okay. Now, how do you state this? Okay, I'm going to pinch a piece of paper again. Um, this, this property, the wording for this property is um, among the worst of all the names of the, the properties, um, the wording. So for that reason, it's the only property I'm aware of on this entire list um, for which an abbreviation is acceptable, okay? So I'm going to tell you what the full property is and then I'll tell you what the abbreviation is. Sorry, Justin, I'm gonna pinch this just so that I can say it properly to everyone. You might be able to think about it. This is number 10 in terms of this diagram we've just drawn. So it says, the angle between a tangent and what? A tangent and what? What is, what's it between? The chord of contact. The angle between a tangent and the chord of contact. Which angle does it equal? Well, it's this angle over here. How can we describe this guy? Okay. I want you to, I want you to think back to when we were talking about like terminology with a circle. So do you remember if you've got a chord, this chord, it divides up the circle into two parts, right? You've got this guy over here, and then you've got this guy over here. Do you remember what those two kinds of shapes are called? It starts with an S. It's called a segment. Um, not to be confused with a sector, which is a, a slice of pizza, right? So this is a segment. Now see how there's two, right? Well, one's bigger and one's smaller, right? So we usually call this guy the major segment, and we would call this one the minor segment, okay? Now, that's in terms of size, but depending on how you drew your chord of contact, you can make this segment the bigger one as it is right now, or I could draw my, point, my chord of contact over that way, and you would make this one the smaller one, which is a bit weird. So all I mean is, see how alpha is in this segment down here? I just mean the other segment. What's our word for this? When you've got something, and then you've got the other one. We use this, uh, we use this phrase in uh, parallel lines. When we say, hey, there's this angle, and then there's that other one on the other side, we call these guys alternate angles. So this is the angle in the what segment? It's the alternate segment, okay? So let me state the whole thing for you. The angle between the tangent and the chord of contact equals the angle in the alternate segment. And those last little words there, angle in the alternate segment, that's the abbreviation that gets accepted because there's no other property that relates to angles in alternate segments. So in fact, there's no other properties that relate to alternate segments at all. So uh, that we, we have in the course. So when you've written that, what I would ask you to do is just underline that last phrase, angle in the alternate segment. Um, for this course and also for maths extension one in which circle geometry is found, um, if you say angle in the alternate segment, thumbs up, we know you mean the entire thing, okay? Right, you guys have worked really hard. I've showed you a lot of properties and you've done a great job developing them. So I'm going to stop there. Well done, we have one last lesson of Noitha left. I hope you've had fun so far. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind having a party with you. I think you've earned it. So um, can I ask you guys to pack up your things? You can pack up. Thank you again for being flexible and coming today rather than tomorrow.
No, no. So in fact, let me draw you one that isn't. I'm going to redraw it like this. Okay. Um, sorry, just for everyone while you're packing up, don't draw this, but just watch it. Because Chloe asked a great question, which was, is the alternate segment always the bigger one? And the answer is no. Watch this. Tangent, chord of contact. Now, when I say the angle between the tangent and the chord of contact, do you notice there are actually two? Do you see that? I mean, probably the instinctive one you see is the small one. You probably see this one. But isn't, isn't this guy also between the tangent and the chord of contact? It's just on the other side. Is that okay? Now, think about that. This angle I've just drawn, the big one, is in the big segment. It's in the major segment, right? So where is the alternate segment? It's down here in the corner. So what would an angle in the alternate segment look like for this guy? This is what it would look like, look like, right? See how this guy's obtuse? That's what makes this one also obtuse, okay? It's harder to see because most people instinctively look for the small one, but it's just as true. It's still the angle between the tangent and the chord of contact. It's still the angle in the alternate segment, okay? Good question.